Good evening and welcome to Talk of the Neighborhoods. I'm Joe Heisler, your host, coming to you from the BNN Live Studios, Eggleston Square, Jamaica Plain, where tonight on the Boston Neighborhood Network, we bring you a two-part show. More state and local politics has, has been our want of late uh, tonight. First up, uh, independent candidate, successful businessman, running for governor this year, Jeff McCormick, from Boston joins us to talk about his decision to jump into the race for governor. Of course, uh, post-primary, it's all hands on deck and uh, all ads on the air as well. And we'll find out more about the reasons he got into this race and what he hopes to accomplish. And then on the second half, well, uh, school, it's been a few weeks since school started. There were a few bumps in the road, but Acting Superintendent John McDonough has somehow managed to come through him. Of course, he's uh, uh, filling in until a new superintendent is hired. Tonight, we'll find out what's the latest from the Boston Public Schools with Acting Superintendent John McDonough. All that and more tonight on Talk of the Neighborhood. I'm Joe Heisler, your host. Tonight, a two-part show. First up, we continue our coverage of election 2014. Uh, it's been a uh, busy, busy year for candidates running for office, and now we're in the home stretch, uh, less than six weeks to go until the November election, and uh, what a free-for-all it's, it's turned out to be, uh, especially the governor's race. Uh, not only Democrat and Republican candidates, but three independent candidates, and tonight, on this first half, we'll feature uh, Another of those candidates, a uh, man who's uh, made his uh, mark in the finance industry, the business world, a successful uh, venture capitalist, and uh, trying on a politician's hat. And uh, um, pleased to have joining me from Boston, Jeff McCormick. And Jeff, Joe, thanks thank so much for th coming. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for coming in. Well, let's let's start here because uh, I think. Uh, uh, a lot of people, you know, you, you hear so much about uh, party candidates, but you don't hear as much about independent candidates. And I know you announced uh, uh, last, late last year and really got into the race earlier this year, but uh, help us to understand what, uh, uh, you're a successful businessman, you know, a lot of people say, Jeff, you don't, you don't need this, you're doing well as it is, why? What happened? Something happened in your childhood that yeah. made you said uh, you saw Nelson Rockefeller, you saw <laughs> Mario Cuomo when uh, you were growing up in New York and said, yeah. hey, I could do a better job than those guys, or how did you get into well, it? Well, I, I certainly didn't say that uh, back then, but um, I did grow up in a middle class um, environment and we were taught about service and we were taught that we should put back. and. I moved to Boston with $800 in my pocket 27 years ago, worked really hard, struggled like everyone, mm -hmm. and it, it, you know, I, in fact, I used to live a few blocks from here uh, way back when, and I, I just essentially you know, lived my little version of the American dream, and I know how to solve problems because we've built companies in energy, environmental, ed education, biotech, software, so we, you know, it's an opportunity for me to put back. It's an opportunity for me to serve. But this is a tough business. Uh, it is. And, uh, you know, uh, success in one field doesn't always equate success in politics. And uh, uh, some, some great candidates uh, sure. uh, that never managed to win a race. And uh, uh, you may be successful yet, but uh, what made you decide to, to try your hand at this? Well, I have the skills to do the job because what you want in a governor, you want someone who can build consensus, you want someone who has the leadership skills, you want someone who can use technology so things run more efficiently, you want someone who's a problem solver, but people in the Commonwealth also want someone who is not tied to the status quo. And that's where the parties have trouble, because when you come up through the parties, you owe a lot of people a lot of things and a lot of favors, and that prevents people from making the best decision for everybody. And the people need a voice. Give us an example. Help us to understand that. that sure. Concept. Well, I mean, just just think. Uh, how, how did Duval Patrick do? Was he, uh, you know, he, of course, uh, passed himself off as a fresh face, but uh, was he ultimately co-opted by Well, just think, uh, so let me use one example. Yeah. And, I, and um, again, I've got a lot of respect for the governor. Mm -hmm. um, just, just so I'm clear. 
but we could have opted out of the Affordable Care Act with an innovation waiver. Essentially, we could have uh, taken that because we had already had a very inclusive health connector system, right, with the, the vast majority of our, of our Commonwealth um, um, in that. And we didn't. And it looks like that's going to cost, it, it'll certainly cost us over half a billion dollars, probably a billion dollars. Well, that's the kind of thing that you can get with the party kind of politics instead of looking out you know, for everyone's best interest and saying that's the right thing to do. Because I continue to believe Massachusetts is going to be the leader in health care, not only in the quality of our health care, but also the delivery model, because we've got to bring costs down. Well, looking at uh, this state and how it has been run, well, what what would you like to do? Tell us, uh, give us some of your ideas. Well, clearly, how you would change it. Lowering health care costs is very important. We're also the fifth highest energy costs. Um, we need to do a better job with that if we want to bring manufacturing jobs back to the Commonwealth. And having just gotten back from um, Springfield and traveling around that area, we need to do that. Uh, there's uh, also opportunities to simplify regulations, to make it easier for small businesses to grow. In fact, I was just in, in the neighborhood over the weekend talking to entrepreneurs saying, it just, it seems like one roadblock after another after another. And it's a shame because you want these people to be able to grow their companies. Well, uh, of course, uh, you're campaigning all across the state. You've been campaigning for uh, almost, almost a, a year. Almost sure. a year. Uh, um, yet, there's not a lot of history of electing independents right. here. Right. And uh, it says, you know, as we said, a tough business. Now, the latest polls, uh, you're not showing up uh, very well there. Is that discouraging to you after all the kind of energy that you're putting into this? Well, uh, we thought we would be in the single digits still. Um, and we thought it's the debates that are going to move things forward. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's when people get to see side by side the the candidates and say wow this you know I have a real choice this time around someone with with you know the significant business experience who has actually created thousands of jobs so I don't just talk about doing that I've already done that you know and I know I can do more of that because I know what it takes well and uh, although I understand that some of the uh uh, media outlets are talking about limiting the debate just to the two major party candidates. Yeah, and, uh, and that discouraging to you? Well, that that to me is discouraging because I think one of the primary roles of the media is to encourage a healthier dialogue. Because the one thing that you will hear from virtually everyone, Joe, in the Commonwealth is the system is broken. Government clearly is not as efficient as it could be. There's been what a dozen scandals in the last mm -hmm. two years. You sure. know of, of some way, shape, or form, you know, probation scandal and DCF and everything else. It, so we have to push things to the next level. So everyone agrees on that point. The question is, do you bring in someone that has the skills to do it, or do you actually take party candidates and, and, and support them? Well, help us out. Now, show us, uh, or not show us, sure. uh, tell us uh, the difference of what, What's the biggest difference between you and Charlie Baker, you and Martha Coakley? Well, uh, again, with Martha Coakley, um, she's she <coughs> hasn't created jobs. You know, she comes up through the legal end, which is which is very very important uh, because I'm a huge believer in women's rights and equal rights. Um, but you you have a different job as governor. You have to roll up your sleeves and you have to manage the state. And there's an awful lot of moving parts. Um, the difference between myself and Charlie Baker is. The vast majority of job growth will come from small companies. You know, that's just where, where the growth is. So he's never, he's never been in one. He doesn't grow these kinds of companies. You know, he's worked as a CEO of a big, you know, healthcare mm -hmm. payer, as you well know, um, which is a very, very different kind of role than the kind of role I think we need. How, how so? Well, um, in what I do, it's, you know, you need to, you have to adopt technologies. You, you have to improve systems. You have to improve efficiencies dramatically within these companies because they're so small. If you don't, you're out of business. You know, when you're a big healthcare payer and you can double or triple your rates and, and fire 1,500 people, I mean, that's a different, it's more of a financial engineering um, assignment versus uh, we have to build it up from the ground. Well, how, how does that happen? Do we uh, use uh, uh, lower taxes? Do we give tax breaks? Do we uh, 
Uh, take Someone, take yeah, us in, sure. take us inside yeah. the. Uh, you're an expert in the world of business. Uh, is yeah, that the, so the key, to, the answer to this, yeah, is it cutting uh, costs, or, the, or is it something else? So there's several things. I mean, one is, uh, as far as the government is concerned, yes, we need to run more efficiently. We need to use technology in many ways that we don't uh, to give people better outcomes, better bang for the, their hard-earned tax mm -hmm. dollars, Joe. Um, but as far as the companies are concerned, if, if that's your question, uh, decreasing the regulations would be very, very helpful uh, so that the state was helping entrepreneurs grow. Every, every time I travel anywhere. Help us, help us to understand. Yeah, that. Um, so in some cases, they, it's just a matter of permitting reform so that people can get the permits they need to expand their businesses and not have literally years long processes mm -hmm. at, at times to do that for reasons that companies don't even know. Um, uh, you mentioned tax breaks. There are some things that we need to do proactively, especially in what we call the gateway cities, you know, or, um, cities and towns, the major ones throughout the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. so that, um, you know, double the historic tax credit so developers can make the numbers work so they can revitalize some of these, some of these urban buildings, which are terrific places, but they just they can't, aren't there yet. They need a boost. Um, we need to... Uh, I believe we need to form uh, a, an office of innovation and, and, and investment so that we can target investments in these areas and bring businesses to those areas because, again, they're getting some help to, to go there. Um, we actually do this in my business at times. If you want to move a company somewhere, if you say that's where the money is, guess what? That's where the company goes. And that's a great way of attracting small businesses to these urban settings because ultimately they're going to thrive. Well, and of course, uh, the, uh, the race has been characterized, well, depending upon who you talk to, uh, I've heard it described as the, uh, the battle of the bland. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not sure who coined oh, that phrase. I'm glad I'm you sure, said I'm that, sure, Joe, I'm not sure me. it's not original, but uh, <laughs> uh, how do you break through, though? Uh, yeah. Because uh, so much of the, you know, it just came through a primary. Uh, you know, a uh, three-way Democratic primary, yeah. two-way Republican yeah. primary. And so much attention, uh, even though I, I don't, I'm not sure the voters were paying attention because the turnout was incredibly 16 low. 16%, right? Yeah. Uh, but uh, how do you kind of break through the, the clutter to kind of get your voice heard? Because yeah, it sounds like you, you know, you, you've got some great ideas here, but I'm, I'm yeah. just, uh, well, I, it's, it's got to be a little frustrating. It, again, it, it's not for the faint of heart, but you have to just keep being out there with the right message, with a consistent message. Uh, a lot of it is, uh, again, the, uh, the players in the media have to say, you know what, this is a really, really important part of the dialogue because this is not bland. These aren't bland decisions. Uh, you know, these are bold decisions to move forward, to change the system uh, in ways that will help everyone's life. And, and you know, and you're going to get those kinds of answers from someone like me because, again, I'm not, I'm not beholden to anyone. I am doing this totally to do the right thing for people of this commonwealth, to give people a choice, to give people a voice. If they really want that, you know, I'm their guy. And if they want to go back to the two-party, the same old, same old, the bland conversations of not really innovating, we're going to continue to have the problems we have, and they're going to get worse, Joe, and not better. That's what is my concern. Well, do you, you know, and I'm thinking of, not to compare you in any way with Scott Lively, who was here last week, uh, uh, while he didn't quite describe himself that way, uh, I think he sees himself as a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, he was more... Uh, uh, kind of concerned about, and I'm, I, I don't mean to put words in his mouth, mm -hmm. but I think he, he pretty much said it, that uh, uh, taking votes away from uh, Charlie Baker because he didn't feel like he was, you know, upholding uh, conservative uh, tradition and, and values, family values. Some people look at any independent candidate uh, because there's no history of them winning as mm -hmm. a spoiler. I'm playing a little devil's advocate sure, here, but uh, uh, are you... A spoiler in this race? Well, clearly, I did not get into this race to play a spoiler role. Oh. I'm in it to win it, and and I know what my skill set is, and the track record is is very apparent. And people know of all these companies, and you know, big biodiesel company in Quincy uh, called Twin Rivers, and Constant Contact, and Waltham, and Boston Duck Tours, mm -hmm. and companies you've heard of, and some, you know, many others that you haven't. Uh, but with that level of experience. For me, it's a question of can you get the job done? That's the most important thing. 
um, because you're not going to serve people well if you can't. And then another, obviously, critical element is can you get elected just given the dynamics of the system? And if enough people say, you know what, uh, of the, you know, there's 53 percent of the voters are unenrolled and there's a lot of voters on both sides that are not terribly happy with their candidate. We, they, we know they're not going to vote for the other side, if you will. But someone in the middle who makes a lot of sense that reflects the important views that they have, they might say, you know what, now's the time. If Is that where you now, see yourself, though, sure. kind of in the middle of, of, of those two? Uh, I do. I, I strongly, as I said, I strongly believe in women's rights and, and, and equal rights. Uh, and yet I also believe that you have to run mm -hmm. things well. It is irresponsible to waste hard-earned taxpayer dollars. What's been the biggest challenge of the campaign in your mind? I would say getting people to realize that their vote really counts and they can make a change because if the vast majority of the Commonwealth thinks it's broken, Joe, you say to yourself, well, don't they understand they can fix it? They can fix it mm -hmm. by getting someone in who really is going to reflect their views. And that's who I am. I, you know, I hate to be so... Well, and I'm thinking of uh, Maine, and I, I was reading uh, something on your website earlier that you had talked to Angus King, sure. former independent governor from Maine, who's mm -hmm. subsequently been elected to the uh, uh, U.S. Senate, and mm -hmm. there is some history there, uh, but there isn't here. And uh, I'm wondering what's missing or what's different that uh, we couldn't have that happen. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what is it? Ang Angus said, you know, clearly Maine is, is different than Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they had at, uh, only 37% were um, uh, independent voters, which, you know, 53% are uh, independent or unenrolled here. Um, I think the big difference, though, is uh, the, the level of political discussion, unfortunately, has decreased, you know, again, 16% mm -hmm. in the primary that so many people have just said, it is just so broken, I, I don't even want to get engaged with it. Mm -hmm. and, and we can't let that happen. It's really important to bring people in because they are in charge of their own fate and they need leaders who are willing to represent them uh, and do the right thing all the time and be very transparent. And, and I think accountability and transparency are huge issues that aren't being talked about enough this campaign. Well, and of course, there's uh, lots of money flowing into the race, and not all of it uh, from the candidates. A lot of outside oh. uh, uh, public <laughs> expenditure committees and yep. PACs, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I know you've sunk some of your own money oh, yeah. into the race uh, uh, in order to try and get your voice heard. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Will you be uh, competitive in the um, you know, media buys uh, as going forward as you go down to the... Because, uh, uh, of course, they are also getting money from their respective parties, sure. and in addition to uh, those outside packs, will your voice uh, get lost in that, or will you be heard? Well, uh, clearly, they have the parties have set up mechanisms that only they can use to raise money. This is within the parties, mm -hmm. and then they also, as you said, have packs, which are huge. It's sort of like the casino budgets. <laughs> There's no way that individuals can raise the kind of money that casinos can just right. throw at this marketing campaign for the... Uh, the third referendum. So, it, you know, you know you can't compete at that level, but if you have the best message and the best person for the job, people are smart. People can cut through that, you know, if they want to take the time to really listen, if they want to really think about what are they doing with their vote, who are they getting behind. Uh, and again, that's, it's, you know, we've seen this so many times throughout U.S. history, you know, women's rights to vote. Uh, the 60s, which you and I lived mm -hmm. through. I mean, we saw it, um, and, and you know, we're at another one of those times. We have a vote. We have a choice. We have the power. Do we want to seize it mm -hmm. or not? And I think I think we should because the power should really be with the people. Well, I, I'm thinking. You mentioned, uh, of course, the uh, the vote on uh, casino gambling, which will mm -hmm. uh, come up for a vote. Uh, and uh, you know, I know Don Berwick, uh, you know, to a certain extent, kind of uh, rode some of that sentiment. Do you, do you have a, a a single issue that you think will help to drive turnout? Will help to drive people towards you? Well, I am against casinos, so that's something that differentiates me certainly from Martha Coakley and Charlie Baker. Uh, and, and there's a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, third of the revenues come in from addicted gamblers. There's uh, uh, increase 
crime, there's increased drug use, you know, DWIs, the social costs are phenomenal. Um, it will hurt local businesses, uh, artist communities, you name it. Um, but that, I, with me, it's more the single biggest thing is you get someone who's experienced and done what the state needs most and he's not tied to, to the status quo that's going to pull him out of doing his job for everybody. That's the, that's the biggest difference. With Who's your role campaign. model for that? Have you seen any, uh, whether it be governor or in some other position that's really managed to, uh, to do that? Uh, well, I've seen uh, a lot of people. Because it's tough. You oh, do have absolutely. a lot of uh, you know, interest oh, no pulling question. on you and, whoa, wait a minute, Jeff. You know, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, people forget. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned civil rights. I mean, there are a lot of complexities, political complexities, with the whole civil rights movement. Um, I had breakfast with a, a woman from, uh, from South Africa the day Nelson Mandela died, and I learned the quote that, it, you know, he said, it is impossible until it is done. And you think, that's an amazing quote from an amazing man, you know, someone who understands that you've got to just do the right thing, and, and in his case, I mean, he. He paid a price for it with a lot of his life in incarceration, you know. Uh, and for me, I mean, just being able to live in America and do what we're doing and say, I want to put back. And if people believe it's time for them to have someone like me represent them, um, now's the time. And I honestly don't think people are going to have an opportunity like this um, very often in their lives. Well, you know, and I know I'm not uh, uh, telling you anything you don't know. Sometimes you have to run more than once to oh, win. I understand. Jeff, you I know? understand. So, uh, uh, if you're not successful mm -hmm. this time, and I know you won't allow yourself to go there because mm -hmm. uh, otherwise you couldn't keep doing what you're doing, will you continue to be involved? And will you look at whether it's this race or a race yeah. four years from now or something else? Will you consider? Uh, well, again, my goal was to be in a position that I could change a lot of lives. And I do that in my, in my, in my life for the last 27 years. As you build companies and you solve problems in education and energy and healthcare and biotechnology, mm -hmm. treating or curing diseases, I mean, those are all wonderful efforts, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but here's an opportunity for me to put directly back into everyone in the Commonwealth. Uh, and having a platform to do that is, is tremendous, but uh, you know, with my life, I feel very fulfilled with, with where I am now compared, you know, compared to the guy who moved here with 800 bucks 27 years ago. <laughs> I was struggling, you know, I, I couldn't even afford an apartment anywhere you know, back then. So, uh, you know, so I, to your point, I, I'm not thinking of that at all. Um, we've got six weeks to go. Uh, we're on the eve of, in fact, uh, six weeks, Joe. Uh, so it is just full steam ahead, and and you know we'll we'll see what the people think after All the debates. You got yeah. it. Well, I want to wish you the best of Thank luck. You. I really enjoyed talking with you. Likewise. Um, again, uh, uh, Jeff McCormick is a successful businessman. This year, running for governor of Massachusetts as an independent candidate here tonight on Talking the Neighborhoods. Uh, sharing with us as part of our election 2014 coverage.